Hello, Sarah Nalish. You are the 2012 Nobel Prize in Physics. You're also administrator of the Collège de France, and you hold a chair in quantum physics. Beginning of the 20th century, quantum physics revolutionized our way of seeing the world. Why is this so fundamental? It's fundamental because it allows us to comprehend the structure and behavior of matter and of light on the microscopic level. It allows us to understand the fundamental processes explaining why atoms attract each other, how they can constitute structures such as solids, how they can group to form molecules. It explains chemistry. It also explains the behavior of electrons in matter, why uh, are some environments are conductive and others not. It explains also many technologies of the modern world. When you know how matter behaves in microscopically, you obtain a knowledge of the world that gives you uh, powerful tools to develop technologies that have changed our lives since the early 20th century. Lasers, computers, um, MRI, which revolutionized medical diagnosis. I could multiply the examples. However, um, this, uh, the fundamental laws of quantum physics were not uncovered just to create these kind of objects. Uh, these laws were discovered because physicians who took an interest in it initially in the early 20th century and later on uh, were driven by a curiosity, by a need to understand the world and nature. Classic physics resulted in contradictions. There were a certain number of contradictions observed in the nature of radiation, what we call thermal radiation, the heat emitted by bodies when they're heated, and the properties of these radiations could not be explained by classic figures of physics. And in order to understand this, uh, physicists in the early 20th century uh, worked like detectives. They had clues, very indirect clues, because technology did not make it possible to experiment precisely. And by proceeding logically, they reached a type of physics that defies logic, and that is what makes this so dramatic in the theatrical sense. They reached conclusions they were not happy with because it challenged the way they envisaged the world. But like any good detective, they didn't stop investigating because they found out the murderer is a member of their family. Uh, people such as Einstein and Schrodinger went all the way. They had to admit that the consequences of their reasoning, of their research, uh, they had to accept those even though it was counterintuitive. So they use thought experiments and you've always sought to prove that these thought experiments were correct. Yes, and in a sense it loops the loop because the technologies allowing us to carry out these experiences are based on quantum physics. We use laser which is uh, derived, uh, which was discovered uh, by understanding the phenomena of interaction between atoms and light, quantum process. We use computers to process the data from our experiences, which are based on transistors and evolutions in transistors, which is also quantum based. We use cold technologies using superconductors, which is also quantum technology. So these technologies are now allowing us to carry out exper experiments uh, that lay bare uh, the strangeness of quantum physics. And that's what I find fascinating in this discipline, in this constant shuttle between theory, practical applications, back to theory.